is everybody today? Uh, my name is Grace, and you can find me as Vanna Willemiel on Instagram, Ravelry, and uh, Periscope. I haven't Periscoped in ages. I'm so sorry, you guys. Just not found a time to be interesting. <laughs> so uh, you're watching my little um, knitting, spinning, and traveling podcast called Babbles Traveling Yarns. We have a Ravel Ravelry group. Um, called Babbles Travelling Yarns uh, podcast uh, on Ravelry and I've got an Ask Me Anything thread if anyone is interested if I speak about something that you're interested in and you want to hear a bit more about pop in there and ask me and I'll either answer it on the podcast or answer it on the thread. So today um, I'm going to be focusing on memories. Memories and um I am going to be talking a little bit about um, my Cozy Memories blanket. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about my spinning, a little bit of spinning, my adventures with cotton and how much, how hard it is. Um, some of my whips and um, the reason why I haven't been doing that much knitting and I don't have anything finished which is um, National Novel Writing Month. So I'm going to be talking a bit about that, my experiences in the past with National Novel Writing Month and how it's going this time. Um, I'm also going to be talking about a little bit of traveling in this podcast. I know it's been a while, but because I don't have much knitting and I'm doing the National Novel Writing Month, I thought I'd talk about um, my experiences on the Camino de Santiago. So hold on to the end. If you're interested in that, I am going to be popping in a couple of videos that I took back then. So I just want to say hello, good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much to everyone that um, comes in and says hello in the comments or on the Ravelry group. And if you're new, welcome. I hope you enjoy uh, this. I just do it for a bit of fun, um, but I love it so much. I love doing this. It's Monday the 7th of November and I am in Sydney, Australia. I am traveling around the world at the moment and it is a beautiful spring day. And I just want to pop in a little video that I took yesterday of the trees that are outside um, my house and on the road. They're jacaranda trees. And if you can see, they're absolutely stunning. The color purple, I have never seen such a color in my entire life. And as I was walking down, there was one tree, it must be like the female tree or something, and I had these amazing like pods, like seed pods, and there's something I just love about them, and I think it's this section. This just looks like the spine of, of like the human body or something. Oh, I just love it, so I just had to take it. I don't know if that's bad. All the seeds have gone, that's fine. Anyway, that's beside the point. I... Let's get started on the knitting, shall we? So the first thing I've been spending most of my time doing is um, this driftwood tea and I'm in the middle of the row. So I'll just be back in two seconds. Okay, I'm back. I've, I actually, right, let me tell you the story. So I've been trying to work on this really hard to try and finish it off because it needs to go to a wonderful little knitting shop. So this is the front that I did. Wait, hang on. This is the front. Little. Uh, or this is, sorry, this is the back. But it, I don't think it matters. They're both exactly the same. So you've got the little sleeves that are rolling in at the moment. Little tiny sleeves. And you've got this nice little lace panel in the front. So <clears throat> I've been trying to work my hardest to, to try and get this done. Uh, so I brought this to work with me and I finished off the lace section. Now after the lace section, you work uh, until the whole piece measures about 11 inches. Now I was just going to count the rows, but I didn't bring the other section with me. I didn't bring a, um, oh, that's one of the Australian crows. They sound like they're sick. <laughs> Um, and I didn't bring a, a ruler with me or a measuring tape or anything. So I just kept knitting and it turns out I've, I've knit like an inch too long. So I've got to rip it back. So I have stopped knitting this for the last four or five, four days probably. 
so angry with myself. I just ugh, just have to sit down and, and rip it out. So I'm going to do that this afternoon. <clears throat> Definitely. And that is the Driftwood Tea uh, by uh, Mercedes Tarasovich Clark. And this is found in Interweave magazine. I don't know when. Summer 2014. Interweave myths. And this is the pattern. And you can get it on Ravelry as well. And it's really, really pretty looking. Look at that. It's just like really simple lines. Lovely. And it's got that lovely lace panel at the side as well. Now, my next one that I have been knitting on um, a little bit at night is my dotted rays. <clears throat> and now that the first small little section is over, it's taking a little bit longer to do the wedges each time because, of course, they get bigger. But I do love it. I love this. Love it so much. I just love making it. It's such an interesting make. So this is where I, the little marker there is where I was the last time. Let me just see if I can put that where. Yeah. So I've done two more wedges, but of course they're getting bigger and bigger now at this stage. And oh, that yarn is such a beautiful color. And this is the DK weight yarn in between, which is color marked yarn, which means when you're knitting it, it's actually quite small. And then when you wash it, it kind of fluffs up. But I think it's going to make like an interesting contrast pattern in between, like of the ribs or something of a of an ancient beast. A little elephant stitch marker. Oh, there you go. It's so cute. Or progress keeper, sorry, that's progress keeper. And I just love the way it kind of comes up in here and makes this little core section where all of the little rays come out. Oh, it's lovely. It's a lovely shawl. I'm in love with it. And I'm knitting it on, um, oh, the lovely Tina. She needs to stop giving me stuff. <laughs> she gave me an emergency set of four millimeter high highest fixed circulars. <laughs> I have ordered more from a chronic yarnaholic and they haven't arrived yet and I had a little panic because um, stuff that I e stuff that I ordered from China from eBay has, has never arrived months later and I'm like well she's not from China and I did send it to the right address so there's no reason why it shouldn't anyway this is the color March yarn huge cone of it I'm not going to use any slash all of it um, but if I run down to the end and I want like a big green wedge at the bottom, I think that would be nice. Um, and this is the other yarn. Oh, it looks, it looks so saturated here, but I'm pulling from the inside. So it, it doesn't look as saturated when I'm knitting it up as this, you know, it looks a lot darker, doesn't it? Sorry for the dragging. It looks a lot darker in the ball on the outside. So that'll be interesting. It'll be kind of like a gradient effect. I think I'm quite going to enjoy that. So I'm going to use all of this and another skein. I have another skein as well. This is skein yarns. Absolutely beautiful. This is her kaleidoscope colorway, which was part of her um, sock club, I think. Um, Tina gave me two thingies. Oh, I have the. Oh, this is good, isn't it? This is very good. Skein yarns sock four ply top draw sock. And it's 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 437 yards. Too nice to use in a sock. What? Far too nice. Skein. Ah! Australia. Artisan yarn and fibre since 2010. Do the thing where you're properly not. Isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. So I'm working my way through that. I'm really enjoying that niche. It's kind of my... Oh, let's relax and stop being frustrated with the everything else that I'm knitting at the moment <laughs> and still be productive now all the rest of my knitting all the rest of my knitting has been on something that I thought I'd never do I have my, one, my stack of minis has uh, has grown um, because just, you know, finishing things, making things, you know, you end up with lots of little minis. So I've got a little bowl of minis and they were looking at me, staring at me in the face going, you're not going to bring me to all over, you know, uh, Perth and Western Australia 
and back home in a little ball shape are you like are you really are you really gonna do that so i was like no of course not little balls so so i've been working my ass off well not my ass off i've been finally getting back to my little cozy memories blanket like the small one not the hand spun one just the normal one the sock yarn blanket now the first one i did months ago months ago was this little square and it took me ages to get this right like ages and I've become much less anal <laughs> and I found a recipe that I really like and it, it took me a while to get into it anyway so this is how much I've done which is quite a lot really in one week I thought so I've decided not to separate out the colors like you know do black one black one you know one dark one light or one variegated and one not I've decided to try and keep the colors in uh, a, in patches and it was inspired by um, the uh, cozy memories along what was it it was like a blanket blitz cow that's what I was inspired by one of the major ones that was that was so beautiful was um, a blanket that kind of went from dark and then like spread all the way to light and it kind of went through the rainbow and I was like I love that idea but of course all the minis I have are the ones that I've made so far so there's a bit of a theme here isn't there it's mainly blues with some purples <laughs> so <clears throat> I don't have the minis from my first ever socks that I made because I gave them away to a, a woman who saw me knitting them and was like I used to knit and I was like here I here just have my minis and you can just knit away on those and I was teaching her how to I gave her my first circular set as well bamboo circular set and um, so yeah I, I managed to get James to get the same ball of wool because she was just knitting a scarf and she really loved it and um, yeah so I didn't have any of that many but the second sock that I ever made was hang on where is it this one the second sock, which is now in my brother's house, I don't know whether he's wearing it or not, but this one here I was knitting when I was in Malaysia and Thailand. Then this one I was knitting when I was in Vietnam, La Lao, Vietnam and Myanmar and Burma. This one I started in Burma and I gave the sock, I uh, knit a Hermione's Everyday Sock to Vicky, to Shane's girlfriend, my brother's girlfriend. Uh, and then which one was next oh yes these hang on these two formed a color work hat and this is when I decided to because I knit the first row so this for this is for part of the color work hat that I made that I don't know where it is but it's too small for me so whatever and this is when I decided to try and match up the colours. So purple with purple and blues with blues and kind of greens and blues and bright blues in this section and then kind of the greys variegated on this side. So, um, yeah, but it kind of messed up how I pick up for this one. If you can see here, it's a very messy join. Um, yeah, because I want all the lines to go in the same direction. I don't really want to do this spiraling out bit, which I think has restricted me quite a lot. Dang it. Okay, I need to just put that in there to stop it dragging. There we go. I should have finished that really last night, but I was tired. And then now it's it's half seven in the morning now. So <laughs> I should have really finished it, but I was like, no, I've got to get up and do this and then I can edit it and I can blah, blah, blah. Um, right, okay, let's go back. So I was there and then I got to uh, Perth and I cast on, which one did I cast on? I finished Vicky's and I cast on this one, which is, uh, it's yarn that I bought in Cambodia, in a market in Cambodia, and I knit a pair of mismatched socks out of them uh, based on the Muppet Yonkers. So the toe... Uh, heels and cuffs were green on one and then they were blue on the other with the green sock so they were quite cute and I think I might do uh, the other the other bit I did save a little bit of the blue for a little toe 
little corner. I think that's really cute. It just reminds me of that sock and I, I just want to look at it and go, what the hell is that? So that's a nice little reminder of what those were. And then this was the, uh, this is Hedgehog Fibers uh, in the loopy colorway. And I knit the Narita shawl by uh, Marcia Ibuki or um, Fairy Little. So that was lovely and I was really glad to use that because all these little balls were sitting there just looking at me going it's me, it's me. Anyway. but before I did this I did this on the road uh, because James brought this down from the UK for me I bought this yarn from Calico and Ivy the shop in Perth in uh, I can't remember exactly where but Calico and Ivy, beautiful shop in Perth, if anyone is there, go immediately. They have, this is Richard de Vries Yarns, who used to be part of Chow Goo. And it's a Canadian yarn, absolutely gorgeous, really hardy, really hardy. Like, when you touch, like this one, this is super fine, super wash merino. And this one, it's like, oh, they'd make great socks. <laughs> but the colours are just beautiful. That's sort of right. Sort of. But I loved, uh, I love the colour. Knitting with this yarn can be a little bit hard on the hands, I found. And I made, I started off making socks on a plane. Socks? Is that right? Snakes on a plane? Socks on a plane. Anyway, it's got a little cable up the side. But then I changed the cable and then I ripped it out because it was too small. Twice. Because <sighs> I was knitting on 2.0 needles or something like that. Something crazy like that. So, um... And then I decided to, because I, because they still wouldn't go over my foot in the end after ripping it out three times, I just made mittens out of them, and I actually gave them to my sister for for her birthday over the summer. Summer back in Ireland, which was uh, in July, so I posted them back to her, and hopefully she will enjoy them and love them coming up to Christmas. But she is coming traveling soon, so um, they might be just left at home. <laughs> in which case, I'll use them because <laughs> I love them and this one now is um, my now were they the next pair of socks that I was making I don't think so I have another pair of socks but they weren't they're, they're probably gonna go over here they're James's socks with the red and I don't really have a red section yet maybe I'll just maybe I'll add on Maybe I'll start a new section. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how it's going to work out. Whatever. It's going to be fine. I don't necessarily want a big, long thing at the bottom because I find that that's quite... An, it's like, oh God, I've got such a long way to go. So I like the idea of squaring it off. So I might do like squares of colour. So this would be the bottom square, which would be blue. This would be kind of the greys. This is kind of the blue section, probably. You know me in blue. I love blue and green. And then maybe I'll go up and do like red and orange on one side. And then what other colours are there? Blue, green, red, orange. Indigo and violet would be probably in the middle. But it might spread up into here. Yeah, the warmer colours up top and the cooler colours down below. And then the dark colours on the this side and then the light colours on this side. That sounds like it might, might be an idea. Um, yeah, but I love working with all the yarn that I used to work with. Anyway, 15 minutes talking about the Cozy Memory Blanket. That's... Oh, yeah. So this one I found really difficult because I managed to figure out how to do this bit and then I realised I'd picked up these stitches all wrong. So I was like... Argh! But I pulled it out like three times by that time. So I was like, never mind. I figured it out on this one and I did a really nice join which was the same as everywhere else. So the way I do my cozy memories is uh, little mitered squares is these are 45 stitches across 45 stitches on the needles to start and I pick up say hang on let me get you a good one so I pick up 22 stitches along here, one stitch from this square and 22 stitches along here and then I start knitting up and I do a centre double decrease which is uh, knit two together or sorry slip two as if to knit and then knit one and then pass those slip stitches over and that makes a really nice 
little single join and then on the way back you purl that center stitch. Now on the edges I was finding I was finding it pretty tricky to figure out what I'm going to do so I ended up with this kind of slip stitch edge I don't know if you can see that it seems like a bit of a wide knit slip stitch edge and that's because I go across to the end I knit, I knit all the way across and then the last one I slip it so the yarn's still in the back I slip it and I turn the work so the yarn is in the front and I actually purl that first stitch bring the yarn over to the back and then I knit the rest of the way across and I do that every time I come to the edge and it gives you this really nice um, edge and then it's really easy to pick it up this edge and it forms this lovely little knit ridge which is quite cute when you pick it up so that's all the edges here and I try to knit in the uh, the ends like I try and pick them up and knit them in because I hate weaving in ends so I've been trying to do that and it looks okay it's not the cleanest but you know whatever it wouldn't be clean if I was weaving in the ends as well so whatever I love it and I'm almost at the stage where I can like fold it in half <laughs> so I um, I have a couple of more minis I have about two more minis and then <clears throat> I'll be working and then that's pretty much all of the minis that I have into this blanket and I really want to start a crochet blanket like um, Homespun House um, and but I don't want to do a granny square because I feel like they use up a lot of yarn and the variegated yarns doesn't look that great in them um, yeah so it's just like I feel like you get like blobs of color and I'm not fond of blobs of color. I kind of like lines that kind of slowly go into, which is why I like knitting. So if I was crocheting, I generally crochet in one color. I don't, I wouldn't, I don't like crocheting with variegated yarns um, or self-striping yarns because it just looks like you switch skeins. It just looks like you switch colors and I'm like, meh. So <clears throat> I think with the crochet blanket that I'm going to start, I'm going to do just a, a single crochet. So it's going to be a much smaller stitch, so the colour changes are going to be more gradual. And I might do some sort of slip stitch, like a like a um, slip, what's that called? It's kind of like a t hound's tooth, where basically I think, I haven't done this yet, but I think what you do is you go down into the row below and pull the yarn from the front. So you just have this, so you've got the... The row of slip stitches there, the row of uh, single crochets there, and then you come across and you've got this kind of a V shape, so it kind of pulls up the colour. I think that would be quite nice. I don't know, we'll see how it goes, because I have loads, I still have loads of minis left. If anybody wants a swap, I don't have that many, um, I think I could probably do two, maybe two swaps um, for minis, um, if anybody would like to do that with me. Um, send me a message on Instagram uh, yeah private message on Instagram that would be the best thing I think um, if you want to do that oh I still have some minis from Kate from Victoria I have one mini that that beautiful green oh yes I'm gonna put that in too because that was beautiful yeah so yes uh, I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna be doing it with everyone because I don't have that much minis I don't have that many it's just I feel like I've got to start using up all the scraps and doing something with them because I am in I am in clear out mode <laughs> at the moment right now uh, oh yes last time I was talking to you I had just spun up a, um, a kind of a self striping attempt at a spinning and this was super fun to spin and so fun to knit Oh my god. So I'll show you how it turned out. It's so good. I love it. But look. So what I had was I had lots of little bumps of different colors and some of them kind of matched up into this gradient. So I spun one gram. It might have been less than one gram each. So I just pulled out a staple length and spun that. And then I pulled out a staple length the next one and spun that. And I pulled out the staple length the next one. And I Navajo plied it, so it's three ply, so it's chain plying it. So you make a loop and you pull it through 
like like that and this the back actually becomes like you can't do it on this small a piece but you basically make a loop and you pull it through and you make it you uh, let the let it go onto the spinning wheel and then you when it comes back to this little loop you pull another bit through and back you go let it go forwards back you go really fun I love chain plying but not on cotton dear sweet mother of God excuse me now but this is my attempts at cotton chain plying. Oh my God. Cotton is so hard to use. I am determined to, to do it right though. I need to, I have a magazine. I have Ply Magazine, the issue on cotton and I haven't looked at it and I've been spinning cotton. What am I doing? What am I doing? So this mess is, yeah. So every time I would try and pull the little, pull the single through the loop, it would just go, no and just split off into these little useless bits. And I'm like, I want to kill it. No, I can't kill it, but anyway. So in the end, I stopped that. <laughs> and I did get, I probably got a couple of yards of chain flying. And then I was like, nope. <laughs> and I just used some of the Merino. Um, so it's 50-50 now. 50% <laughs> Merino, 50% cotton. And then I let it soak overnight in tea. Barry's tea, very strong tea. Uh, so it's kind of formed this because I didn't want to just have loads of white things in this. I feel like this white one is really nice. Doesn't this one look so good? So I'm loving the different methods that I'm using for these. Love them. Everything in this is hand spun by me. This is still, of course, my favorite. That's the merino that I hand carded, washed and everything. The only thing I didn't do is shear the sheep. So this is um, kind of a gently tea stained cotton merino blend and it's still soaking wet so I still need to dry it which is why it's still in the loop but um, yeah it's okay if you see so the the merino wasn't exactly the cleanest so it's either the cotton or the merino that hasn't taken up the tea. So on a couple of these you can see it's white. It's so interesting how the two picked up the color slightly differently. Uh, I think on that one maybe you might be able to... <laughs> I can't see it. Um, yeah so you can see that one is slightly darker than the other. So that was really interesting to do and Yes, I still have tons more cotton, but I said I just have enough to put into the cozy memories and I was like, can't do any more than that and I'm going to die. Um, and then just for a little bit of relief, I um, I decided to try and just do kind of a blendy thing with two different colours that I had, which is a purple and a red. So I got the staple length and I just pulled out a little bit. I, I held two of them together and I pulled out a little bit. Um, so there was just two little bits and I, I layered them on on top a couple of times until I had like a bunch and then I spun those together so they kind of um barber pulled in the single and then I uh did I chain ply them no I just double I just I just two plied I just plied as normal and um oh they smell so good um I always put my conditioner in there which is Herbal Essence's uh, long-term relationship and it smells so good <laughs> If anyone want to knows, want, wants to know what my hair smells like and what my yarn smells like, Long Term Relationship by Herbal Essences. That's a zero waste thing I, ca I can't figure out at the moment. Um, conditioner. My hair is very long and I tried to go without shampoo. I went four months and it was just, you know, and going traveling and stuff. It was just like, I can't do this to other people that don't know me that I'm living with. So, um... Yeah, and I tried like different oils and stuff and it just didn't work. So I've gone back to the bottle, I'm afraid. I need to work on that, but that's okay. Um, so this is what happened. It's very interesting. So you've got some sections which are more red and then they kind of change slowly into purple. I don't know if you can, if it's going to focus on that. It's kind of tricky with this. Yes, so I really like this. It's just like a, it's 
it's not like a, a color I, I would have put together, but I just picked them randomly out of the box, out of the bag, and um, it's really cute. More, more twist. So uh, it was really, really curly though. Um, so I hung it, I wet, I soaked it overnight, and then oh no, I soaked it for about three or four hours last night, and then I um, I thwacked it, thwack, thwack a lacking. And uh, then I hung it over the rail of the shower and I hung like a, what's it called? You know, the spray bottles. I just hung one of those over it just so it hung, hang it straight. And um, yeah, that's what it looks like. Quite cute. So I'm going to be knitting those two into my blanket the next time and I will have that for you next week. Um, next, 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 next. I think that might be it. That's all I've been doing, which feels like not, not, not much because I have been taking part in National Novel Writing Month. Uh, National Novel Writing Month happens every November. Um, Halloween is your prep night. <laughs> I didn't do any prep, which is why I probably faded out a little bit, but I started off with a great ambition I've taken part in National Novel Writing Month for, oh gosh, the first time I, I signed up was in 2009, but I didn't do anything. I was like, oh yeah, maybe. And then I was like, no. And then I really, really took part when I was in Edinburgh. And I loved it because I was with a really interesting writing group. Uh, it was just by chance that I was happened to be in a bookshop where one of one of, uh, one of the beautiful ladies was um, uh, inquiring about it, and I was like, "What's that?" <laughs> then I was hooked. Um, word sprints are the only way that I can write now, uh, which is where you join in online, either on Facebook, on the National Novel Writing, on the Nano Nano Rimo page on Facebook. They have a they have a section which is. Uh, a post which is dedicated to word sprints where you basically say okay I'm going to write for 20 minutes at the top of the hour because people are writing from all over the world um, we just say the minutes you know say at zero zero at 10 minutes past the hour at whatever and um, then you kind of like try and write as fast as possible to beat everyone else who's writing at the same time and honest to God, it's the best thing ever because you just get out of your head. You stop that that little voice in the back of your head going, this is so crap. Why would anyone want to read this? Oh, my God, look at that spelling mistake. Blah, 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 blah. So you just kind of you're like, I don't care. <laughs> just write, 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 write. And the stuff that comes out in those word sprints are genius. Like I, I, I take no responsibility for them. <laughs> But they just seem to make the story work and they push the story forward because you're like, oh, I need to write something, anything, blah. And then things happen. Magic happens. So I am up to currently, what am I up to at the moment? Um, I think I'm over, I'm up to 9,000. So the first couple of days I was getting up really early and I was up, like, I normally get up at about six o'clock every morning. Just because we, the, there's... The light starts shining at six o'clock every morning and the planes come over at six o'clock every morning. And um, yeah, so we just, I, normally I just lie in bed on my phone for like two hours, <laughs> do nothing. But since NaNoWriMo, I've been getting up, having a little shower, getting some breakfast and then sitting down, putting my earplugs in and just writing. And I found the most amazing thing, right? It's called the Ambient Sound Mixer, or Ambient Mixer. And you can... I'll put it in the show notes. It's incredible. I wrote it down now, so I won't forget. But, um, um, and I've been listening to the um, Gryffindor Common Room. They have a Gryffindor common room, like ambient sound. So you've got the fire and you've got like parchment, like writing and you've got page flips and you've got like a, like there's like a group of people in the background chatting, but you can't really hear them very well. And it's lovely. They've got Gryffindor, Hufflepuff and Slytherin as well. The Slytherin one is so interesting because it's got like a drip, drip, like a kind of a watery sound as well, because it's like underwater near the lake, so they say. It's so good. And then they've got the, um, they've got like, they don't have just Harry Potter. They have um, 
a Game of Thrones section. They have a Lord of the Rings section. They have like so much stuff. It's so good. If you're writing or you need to concentrate or anything like that, you can also download the app, which is quite good. Um, I I basically have been putting it on my laptop and bringing my laptop around with me. And once it's downloaded and started the loop, uh, it's not using any data, so you can just keep it going if you have a tab open. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, I thoroughly recommend that. So it's been helping me kind of concentrate and keeping, because I always have to have something blocking out the world around me to write because otherwise I get distracted. I can never watch something on TV. We, I can't, we can't like sit down and watch anything uh, because I won't be able to write anything. But I'm at the point in my story where I have written a story. I have written, the, okay, the idea of NaNoWriMo is to write a novel that's 50,000 words in a month, which means you have to reach a point of, you have to write about 166 words per day to reach that goal. And it's nice to have the goal. And 166 words, uh, sorry, 1,066 words, sorry, that maths doesn't work out. Um, 1,066 words actually you could do it, I'm, I'm able to do it, I'm able to write 700 words in a 20 minute sprint. So that's an hour and a half, and then I'm done. I mainly did it in the morning when I was doing it, I was like, done. And then anything else I wrote was extra on top of that. So I think I'm, oh, I need to check anyway, but I need to do that. I need to get back to it. You got, and another thing about NaNoWriMo is you got to tell everyone you're doing it. So they keep you honest. <laughs> But in Sydney, they've got meetups and groups as well. And there's an amazing one happening, um, I think, in a week or two weeks. I think it might be next Sunday. But it's a, a writing on the train. So you meet everyone on the train in Central Station. And then you all get on. Um, the, the trains in Sydney, uh, the, the transport in Sydney, is capped at $2.50 or something for the whole day. So you can go anywhere for $2.50. I don't know if that extends to like going to Melbourne or going to Canberra, but it does definitely count towards, you know, you can go to the Blue Mountains or you can go down to the beach, you know, down to like a beachside town, which is like three hours away. So it's amazing. So we're going to do that. We're going to hop on a train um, uh, for $2.50, bring our books and put our earphones in and write with everyone there. <laughs> and we go down and we have lunch in like a nice town and then we hop on the train and come back back. <laughs> I think it's a great idea <laughs> and um, yeah so that's really enjoyable um so that's why I haven't been doing so much knitting because you can't really knit while you're writing although I think I need to invest in some sort of voice recognition software don't you that would be awesome but I think I'm stuck at the moment I um I got some amazing feedback from my previous novel and I I know what I need to do but I'm stuck as to where I need to put it in. So I need to go and do more editing. I need to read over the book, get used to the book again, because I wrote it years ago now. And I keep rewriting it and rereading it. And every time I do, I come across, I change less and less. But with this feedback that I've got, uh, it's been fantastic because I need to, I, I know what I need to concentrate on. It was hard to know what I needed to do from an insider perspective so now I'm like aha uh -huh, yes of course so that was great um so that's what I need to work on that's what I'm doing now 35 minutes okay so I've got 20 minutes to fill <laughs> not really but I, so I was going to talk about the Camino de Santiago now so I started the Camino in 2012 with my father and my uncle, and uh, sorry, I'm just knitting down here, so I'm just going to be talking to you as I'm knitting. Um, and a big bunch of us, basically, a big group of us. My mum came as well, and she was really trepidatious. She's not a big mountain climber, so she, but she was preparing forever. My God, she was the she was the fittest of all of us. I've now realised that I am not fit. Uh, my parents are going to be always fitter than me. It seems I will never be as fit as them. <laughs> But um, we went for nine days to start and I, um, it was absolutely heartbreaking to leave. Oh God, it was awful because everyone was carrying on and we'd met some absolutely lovely people and anyway, 
I decided to go back in uh, 2013 after I'd finished all of my exam for uni and I had about five weeks before I could get my registration through and um, start work. That technically I could have started work earlier but I didn't realize this at the time when I was booking the flights in January or February and that when I got a job in April they were kind of really pissed off that I had booked a holiday and I couldn't go anywhere until I came back. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> But um, yeah, so I booked five weeks off and I decided to start from the place where we left off. I don't know necessarily if that was a good idea because by that stage you were nine days into the trail and most people had met their friends or their Camino family essentially. Um, so I struggled a bit for the first uh, first couple of, uh, couple of days. But um, I decided to do a blog. And the blog is still live if you want to go and read up on it. Some of the stuff is quite funny. And I'm going to read a, um, a section of it now, just so you get an idea. So this, I don't know how long it should be. I don't, we'll see. We'll. So I've decided to write, read you the first blog post I wrote about the Camino. And it describes the first Camino that I went on with my parents. And the pictures following are some of those images from that first time. And it begins again. I always seem to be doing this. My life is in doubles, redos or restarts. I start something and start again. But I suppose the most important thing is that I finish them eventually. It all gets done. Which is what this is. A restart. A continuation of what I started back in September. Let's give a little background, shall we? I heard about the Camino de Santiago from my father first. My father usually has a fantastical ideas about fantastic things and I go, oh yeah, that's interesting, and get on with my life. But this really got hold of my dad and my uncle. Several talks and a book and the film The Way later, I was hooked too. I was sorting out plans and money and flights and it was suddenly the last family holiday again and I was all booked in to go. 10 days hiking across the Pyrenees from Saint Jean Pierre de Port to Bilbao on the Camino de France, Camino Francaise, with my parents, my uncle, and a family friend. We started with five, but soon grew to six when I found my exact twin on the first day climbing through the clouds in the forest with a stone in my shoe. By the time we reached Pamplona on day three, we were there were around nine of us coming and going, drinking in a bar here, going with others to get ice cream, and others again to get tapas or pinchos if you want to be picky. Like a great flowing, moving village, making their weary way across the beautiful Spanish countryside. By the time we got to Estella, we'd managed to gather enough Irish people, and people who wanted to be Irish, to have a yearning for the old spud. So dinner was produced, the best stew ever made, that cemented us as a family. But it didn't stop there. By the time we were due to leave, I would say that I'd met over 20 people who I know could be for my friends for life. Miracles kept happening. A f I thought about a walking pole and one materialised in the bushes. A kitty followed us for kilometres. I saved people and people saved me and it changed me. But it wasn't to last. We had to head back to real life. Ten days was all that our lives could spare us. I had to go and finish last year of my second degree and it broke my heart to leave. It's hard to think of it now. Hard to imagine the pain that I felt that made me cry for the first time on ever leaving somewhere. It wasn't even the where, it was the who. The people I left there are still with me and will always be. Which is why I'm wearing this time round, on the eve of my return to that last town of Santo Domingo del Casara. I'm sick to my stomach because this time I go alone, without my mother and her handy medical no-nonsense loving attitude, creator of stews and happiness, my father, the kindness that dragged me onwards through my silly emotional outbursts. My uncle, seeing the world open out before him and making me remember that I could sing again. And Kevin, who was the handle that helped me open the door, but don't bring up the deodorant. <laughs> I'm on my own. I'm leaving this whole life of a student behind me, moving through this path of the Camino to come out the other side, a fully functioning member of society. I'm leaving uncertainty behind, leaving self-doubt and self-pity by the wayside. I'm doing this alone, for me, to figure out how to become proud of what I have done, happy in my decisions where I am, and to be confident to face the future with those that I chose to be beside me, near or far. 
but I'm allowed to be wobbly the night before, right? And I was I was reading my my blog before I uh, filmed this, and I just I really like that um, essay. I'm going to put in a few little videos of uh, my trips, my 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 main trip. Um, my sister ended up coming out to see me, as did my boyfriend at the time, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just go through lots of different things. The blog is actually really quite interesting. Uh, going back into it because I was going to do a day by day thing and then I was just got sick of it because everyone does that there's lots of blogs about day by day oh we went to this place and we went to that place but what I found the Camino was more important uh, was um, the people you meet and how you figure out how you're able to do things you really like this sounds so cliche but you do find out who you are and I found out who I was and I found out that I was not very fit. <laughs> but I could walk 20 kilometers a day. And I knew I had to start early in the morning. I had to start at 5 a.m. in the morning uh, because I couldn't deal with the heat. Unfortunately, that year was the worst spring ever. I went in May. It was the worst. <laughs> there was snow one day, I wrote about that. And I couldn't believe it but the weather did get better and my sister coming out to see me really helped and then on the last week I met some of the most beautiful people I've ever met in my life and I'm going to be putting some videos up of them and I hope you enjoy them. Bye! Hello everybody! I am just up about... this is Itero de la Vega behind me <laughs> And that's the sun rising behind me. It is half six in the morning. This is quite late. I'm not normally this late. I'm normally out the door by five o'clock, quarter past five. And actually they had breakfast set up and I was like, oh, breakfast. But I hadn't ordered it the night before. So I was like, I won't take somebody else's. I'll be a good pilgrim. So um, I'm going to walk for eight kilometers to the next village, which is Bodia something, something, something. Whatever, wherever I end up, <laughs> I will find food and I will eat my food. I also have like some chorizo and cheese and uncooked pasta. So if things get really desperate, no, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. There is never, <laughs> there is never any desperate situation on the Camino. It's just forever. Oh, look at this. This is cute. For some reason, they've got Nightmare Before Christmas painted on this little door thing these things happen. The whole place, right, we're in the Mesata, but the whole place is, um, there's loads of these uh, windmills all across the, oh, there's the sun rising. It's beautiful. <sighs> fresh, fresh. It's about seven degrees. It's quite cold. I said it was going to be overcast today, but I don't see many clouds in the sky. Well, apart from those ones over there, but they're all keep walking and uh, yeah that's the whole point I suppose. Right, bye. Hey guys again I'm now in Leon and remember that day that it was snowing in San Juan de Ortega? Well it's snowing pollen here in uh, in Leon just down by the by the river it's just covered in this white stuff and it's just the most beautiful thing. And I just walked up here, and I think, I don't know what this is, but it's gorgeous, and I'm going to show you. It's just incredible. I just walked up. It's like some sort of thing. I don't know. Maybe a monastery. Who knows? I think it's actually, I think it's the Monastery de San Marcos, which is great, because that means my hostel is like right down the road. Perfect. Right, I'll see you later. Actually, next time you see me, I'll be with my sister. Everybody, we are in front of Leon Cathedral again because it's my favorite place in the whole world, and my sister is here with me. Hello, Shabon. Hello. Say a few words. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Louder. Hello, everybody. Well done. She'll get the hang of it a bit. But uh, yes, so she's here, and we're going to start walking tomorrow. We're going to go into the cathedral today and do a bit of all the new information I have for you. I'm sorry, that's all.
Bye. Wait a second. Turn it on. Hello. We're here in Virgin El Camino. And full of nature. Full of the nature that we see. Here we see a bus. <laughs> And the sun is rising, and it's beautiful. There's a f herd of cars on the way, and it's just incredible. We feel so honoured to be here. I was really hurt about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk for a while, though. That's I know, I think it's very good. Who's your David Attenborough voice? It's fail, anyway. <laughs> I thought I did it a bit. <laughs> Well done, well done. Okay, well, okay, we've walked how far? I we, can't see anything. We got up. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sun, it's beautiful. It's sort of, we walked for about an hour and a half, and we are in a place, it's, it's like a suburb. Virgin de Camino. Very good, say that louder, please, everyone. Wait, we're trying to find a coffee shop. It's only seven o'clock. Coffee! See you later. One. <laughs> You're so professional. This is Masary. We have just noticed the quantity of tractors. There's like two over around. there. There's there's a digger up here. Yeah. And there's a, a there's two other two more here and a man and a spar. <laughs> so obviously it's like a little Spanish Milton Malbay on mass day. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of your first walk, Siobhan? It was fantastic. And I have absolutely no complaints. And it was just incredible. And how are the feet, these? The feet are fine. Look at them. Look at, they up, got up. a little bit tender afterwards. Only when you changed into your nice Only sandals. When I changed, but other than that, they're perfect. And all sun cleaned up. Beautiful. I'm ready to chill. <laughs> ready to party. Oh, here's another tractor. He's coming up. I wasn't impressed. Hello! We are on our way. We've just passed a beautiful hostel. That's a tractor. Uh, we just passed a beautiful hostel in Villa something. Something. Something town. And uh, we've seen so many interesting things today. Animals and wildlife. Such as a field of storks. <laughs> There's like 15,000 storks in a field. That's a slight exaggeration. But they were so elegant and pecky. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then what else did we see? A, fa a horse with five legs, which turned out just to have a foal behind it. Uh, wait, but, you know. <laughs> and then what else did we see? What? The bird. <laughs> Bird. The bird in the little oh, hole. Lots of birds. Oh right. Yeah. Oh, show them the holes that they come out of. These tiny, tiny, tiny little birds. Come out of these God, I have tiny, not tiny a steady holes. hand. And I don't know how they do it because it seems totally impractical. Yes. Okay. That's, yeah. <laughs> me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes. So all of this nature. We didn't see it before in the last time, but I think it's because it's spring and everything's alive. And now this tractor is following us, <laughs> so we better go. Bye! Hello! Oh, it's very sunshiny, very glary. But we're just walking across the biggest medieval, like, bridge or something um, in Hospital d'Orbigo, and this is the Rio d'Orbigo. And just up here, this is the bridge, and Siobhan, say hi! Hello. Hey! This is the bridge, and it's beautiful. And just up here, we think it's some sort of like medieval jousting thing. Jousting field pitch. I'm not exactly sure of the exact terminology, but it's so cool. And I want to joust. Where did I keep the horses? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's so awesome. Yeah. And me and Grayson are walking in these huge mountains. You can see they're massive. And there's so many. And it's so pretty. And Two days ago, we were on flat, looking at these mountains. And how did this happen? How did we get here? I don't feel this. Do you know, I have the, I have the answer for you, Siobhan. Yes. See what you're doing right now. That's how you got here. That's how we all get here in the end. It's incredible. And so satisfying. <laughs> With your with your boy Conan, the dog.
<laughs> We're in Hostel de la Piedra and they have the most adorable animals in the world. They're so lovely. This is the best place. Bye Conan. He's waving goodbye. Good morning everybody. Actually it's nearly midday. I've left quite late today. But I was seeing Dan off. And there's cows. Oh crap. There's cows and they're coming at me and I was going to show you how brown they were. But uh, they're following me. It's like suddenly we're in Spain back there with those brown cows and then Frisians everywhere. Frisians. Oh, they're being... Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. The equivalent of granny, Spanish granny is uh, herding them down to get milk or something, I don't know, to move them. But uh, that was completely terrifying. Okay, <laughs> I'm fine. Whew. They're in charge. Spanish granny is in charge. Whew. Thank God. Right, I'm coming up to here now, in through a farmyard. Oh, mud, 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 mud. But it's good. It's after clouding over now, which is, I, I'm glad, because I'm in short sleeves and I'm as white as can be still, miraculously. So, and look at this, it's all stone walls. I could be in Green Mount. I could be in Green Mount. Very easily. Amazing. <laughs> Hello everybody. So, I just left this tiny little town uh, called, I have no idea what it's called. I'm more than halfway there. But what I've noticed today, today, specifically of all days, that all the tractors are out. Everyone, there's like, they're spreading slurry over there, fine fresh smell, and they're cutting the silage down there that side. And up here, they're, I don't know, turning over the earth or something. And then earlier on, I saw the amazing procedure of silage bales being wrapped. And I think there was like, there was like a crowd, there was like 15 uh, pilgrims like standing watching this amazing thing, you know, being wrapped in plastic at the back of a tractor. It was, it was really funny, like they'd never seen it before in their lives. But uh, it's really windy today, but it's good because it's really hot to do. So I'm going to Palestine ready today. I'm going to have dinner with Corina, Katharina, Steve, and maybe Gwen, but I think he might go on further. And uh, it's all planned and fabulous, as usual. Bye! <laughs> Show me what you can do. Impressive. How oh, hot can she die? <laughs> <laughs> <Bam. laughs> Marching bands. This is beautiful. Just what you need on the Camino. <laughs> Dying ducks. We need to march. We need to be able to march. Dying ducks and marching sounds. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Didn't just walk up the hill. How are always you? Look like that. <laughs> How is everybody? Look at that beautiful Hello. sunrise. How are you, Steve? Hi there. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> We're such good liars. <laughs> such, so good. Okay. We are two days from Santiago. 35 kilometers? 36. At least. At 34. least 35. 34. Okay, we're going to be optimistic. 34 kilometers from Santiago and we are going to fly! <laughs> well, float. Well, he's, yeah, go he's going to float. That's the point where you do the special effect into the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we are in Santiago. Okay, get ready. Go. Walk. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> yes. What time is it? It's six o'clock? It's, um, right. Wait, 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 wait. It's 5.45. 5.45. Yeah. And we are... Having breakfast. We're having breakfast in it's the dark. <laughs> and we... It looks terribly dark. Uh, uh, uh. Hi, no. hey, Steve. Hi. <laughs> 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 but we wanted to get up early and try and get into Santiago before 11 o'clock. And we could just watch the moon rise. It's a tiny, tiny little sliver of a moon. And we only have 13 kilometers to go. And it's only like, we'll be there for breakfast. We're going to have breakfast in Santiago. Yeah. Big breakfast. Big. Big, big time. Big, big breakfast. Big breakfast. We're going to eat all Every. Santiago. <laughs> You're not going to have any food. Twice. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. 
<laughs> That's what we care about. <laughs> well, yeah. And the wine. The wine will be about 9 o'clock, I think. And it's not about getting a couple of stuff. <laughs> we'll wait until 9 for wine. Wait until 9 o'clock for wine. Wine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs>the very emotional mass I found out that I had passed my degree with a 2-1 with honours so um, Steve managed to find a bottle of Jameson's to celebrate and it was only 11 and then we went to pick up our um, Pellegrino certificates and the passport the long thing in my hand is a 
um, every time you stop in an alberg, you get a stamp in your passport to prove where you've been, prove what you've done, and then you go up to the Peregrino, the Pilgrim's office, and pick up your certificate, which apparently absolves you from all and any sins, or something like that. I don't know, it's written in Latin. <laughs> Good afternoon everybody, an afternoon post, how incredible. Right, I'm in Santiago bus station and I'm just after saying goodbye to Corina and Katarina and they're down there in that bus. They're beside the, the emergency exit window. I'm very happy about this in case the bus turns over and they have to escape from a tragic bus accident, bus situation. They're going to head away on the night train away and I'm going to go back and do some thinking and get ready for tomorrow, which is my new journey to Finisterre on my own. Good morning everybody. I don't want to be too loud because I'm right outside the Hilberg, but this is what I'm saying goodbye to today. Cathedral behind me, the one that I walked so far to get to, and now I'm going to the sea. I'm going to walk to the seaside. So, I'll see you later. Bye. Good morning, everybody. It's half six again, and I'm just leaving this tiny little village called Villa Sierro, and it's a wonderful, soft morning, as they say in Ireland. Uh, it's warm. It's like 15 or 16 degrees, which is warm for Ireland, anywhere else. And uh, it's just it's just raining just a little bit, just like drops, just to cool you down when you're being hot and walking everywhere. And the mist is everywhere. That's little village that I stayed in last night. And there's lovely mist everywhere. And uh, I'm feeling really, really good. I'm walking 20 kilometers today to Oliviero something like that and uh, yes two days to the seaside <gasps> I think I just stepped on a snail so I'm just taking a little stop here for a second it's this beautiful river with a bridge just coming through here and it just reminds me of the Shannon so much and I want to get in <sighs> but I only have two kilometers to go so, maybe the river goes through the next town where I'm staying, maybe, and then I can go for a swim. I haven't been for a swim this whole trip, I think there's something wrong. So, it's raining, but look at the sea, isn't it beautiful? I don't need to see the sea. Right now, I know what it looks like. I'll be in it shortly. Bye. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Finally, we see the sea. You're so wonderful. This is our pregnant companion. <laughs> End of my shoes. Lucas's t shirt. <laughs> How long did you wear that t shirt, Lucas? Uh, five weeks. Five That's weeks. <laughs> Show us your <laughs> Croatian fire, Thomas. Yes. Very it's nice. nice. It's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a way in the distance. Pipe, piping the shoes out. Piping the shoes out. So that was the end of our trip, that was as far as we could go and then Gwen and I went for a swim <laughs> when we found somewhere we could get in safely and uh, I just wanted to, it was lovely going back over these images and it was absolutely beautiful to remember the moments and the people and 
who I was back then as well because I have changed and it was absolutely the most special time in my life and I'm really grateful that I went. I think this is my favourite photo of the whole Camino. On the right hand side you see the runners that I was wearing and I walked uh, 5, 500 <laughs> miles or 800 kilometres and the first thing I did when I got to Finisterre was buy some new shoes which are the clean ones on the left and some new socks. <laughs> so I just want to thank you for coming along with me on this little trip and buen camino!